A few years ago, I met a friend called Linda, and we became friends, or I didn't meet her as a friend, but we became friends, and uh, I, something was different for her. And after two years, she suddenly told me, I can't read and I can't write. And that was amazed me, how she can figure out everything. And um, the Netherlands is a rich country, so there are and there are 250,000 people who can't read or write in a rich country. That's amazing. But Bunker comes from India, and there are so many more rural areas where people have no, where they can't get any education. So Bunker solved this problem in a small way, which grew and grew and grew. He founded the Barefoot College the only school in the world to open for people without former education. Bunker, we are very honored you're here. I went to a very expensive, snobbish, elitist education in India. Couldn't have been more elitist, couldn't have been more far off from the world that I live in now. And out of sheer curiosity, I went to a village for the first time in 1965, and I saw famine for the first time, death, hunger, starvation. And uh, it really hit me between the eyes that I went to such an expensive education, I didn't know my own country. I went back home and everything was laid out for me. My jobs were laid out for me. I, went from a, I came from a very powerful and well uh, uh, rich family. And then I told my mother, I think I'd like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. She said, what is this? You just went to the village the other day, and in 14 days, what happened to you? I said, well, I saw India I'd never seen, and I'd like to live and work. Oh, what about these jobs all laid out for you? Everyone wants you to come. I said, no, I want to live. What do you want to do in a village? No money, no job, no prospect, no future. I said, I want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells. She didn't speak to me for many years because I'd let my family down. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But then for five years, I dug wells as an ordinary unskilled laborer, and I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge and skills that very poor people have. Never come out in universities or college. You have to see that extraordinary knowledge and skills that they have. And then I thought I'd start a barefoot college only for the poor. What the poor thought was important would be reflected in this college. Went to this village for the first time. They said, are you running from the police? I said, no. <laughs> you failed in your exam? I said, no. You didn't get a government job? I said, no. What are you doing here in this village, middle of nowhere? Look at the education you had. What are you doing? I said, I want to actually start a college for the poor and bring back the knowledge, skills, and wisdom that very poor people have into mainstream and show that that knowledge, skill, and wisdom is still applicable today. It is still relevant today. It can still be applied and respected today. So we redefined professionalism in the college. Who is a professional today? A professional is someone who has a combination of competence, confidence, and belief. A water diviner for us is a professional. A traditional midwife producing babies is a professional. A bone setter, the equivalent of an orthopedic surgeon in a village who who sets bones is a professional for us. 
And these are the people who you'll find everywhere in the world, including India. And we were looking for these people, and they'll be found, and they are working quietly, and no fanfare, but they are the ones who are the backbone of rural communities all over the world. The Barefoot College is 500 miles southwest of Delhi. It's in a place called Village of Thelonia. It's a very small village, very hot, 45 degrees in summer. Sometimes it does not rain for five years. So it's a very, very a simple place, but a very typical Indian village. This is a quotation I love very much. The literature of the 21st century is someone who can read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. The Barefoot College is a journey of learning, unlearning, and relearning. Mark Twain said, never let school interfere with your education. <laughs> school is where you learn how to read and write. Education is what you get from your family, from your environment, and from your community. So when we said that, they said, well, prove it. You're saying something which is out of this world, but can you put it on the ground? So we built the Barefoot College in 1986 using 12 barefoot architects who can't read and write today, even today. They built it. He's my first barefoot architect. They built it at $1.50 a square foot. 150 people live there, families live there. In 2002, we got the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. And we had to return it because they said there must have been an architect involved. I said he only built the blueprints, but these are the ones who made the buildings. So sadly, we had to return the $150,000. But the barefoot architects are there to stay. We went up, when we came to the roof, we went to this very high-powered forester who had lots of degrees next to his name. And I said, what, will, what can we grow here? I said, you can't grow anything here. Water, no water, it's hard rock below. Then I said, I'll have to go to the old man in the village. And I went to the old man in the village and said, what species will grow here? And this is what it looks like today. Never trust a forester. This is what the Barefoot College looks like today. All the trees. It's the only college where we collect water, the rainwater. Today, unfortunately, we have engineers who take water out of the ground. More water is coming out of the ground than what is going into the ground. If you ask a grandfather today anywhere in the world, what do you do for water? They said we collected rainwater. So we wanted to demonstrate that collecting rainwater is very important today and not let water come out of the ground as much as you're doing now. So these people are sitting on a 400,000 litre tank where we collect, the roofs are all connected underground in the Barefoot College. And if it rains, should it rain, when it rains, we collect 400,000 litres of water. It's the only, we have a library of 40,000 books because we think that this is very important for the children to come. We have an optical fiber cable. We have a telephone exchange, which is fully solar electrified, so we don't depend on conventional grid from outside. We have a post office, where if you should buy some handicrafts on the internet, in seven days through this little post office will reach you anywhere in the world. And it is the only college which is fully solar electrified. We have 100 kilowatts of panels on the roof. And they're all decentralized. So there's one panel. If one power plant goes out of action, the other five work. We have a community radio. We've reached 50,000 people through our community radio station. We have a dentist, a barefoot dentist. These are grandmothers, two grandmothers who've been trained how to be a dentist. She looks after the teeth of 7,000 children. If you ask them, they say in six months, Give them the right training, they'll do a root canal for you. <laughs> How's that? Acupuncture, we also believe in alternative health medicine. And we are physically challenged barefoot pathologists. Trying to demonstrate 
So what if they don't know how to read and write? So what if they don't have a degree or a paper qualification? They can be dentists, they can be engineers, they can be communicators, they can be acupuncturists, they can be designers. Anything is possible. Just don't penalize someone just because he can't read and write. This is, a, this is the message that the Barefoot College is given. Never call anyone uneducated. Actually, you're saying that they don't know how to read and write. So call them illiterate, but never call them uneducated. So we start on a school, and there are 500 children who come to these schools. And this is our first barefoot solar engineer. He's a priest in a nearby temple, but he has actually solar electrified. He's only done eight years of primary schooling, but he has actually solar electrified the whole campus. Everything works off the sun. Fans, computers, pathology labs, everything. So long as the sun shines for the next 25 years, we have no problems with power. But we thought, instead of only keeping that technology and the barefoot solution to ourselves, we thought we would replicate and go outside. And we thought we'd see how we, this demystified, decentralized approach can be replicated all over India. So we thought we would actually only train women. What is the most powerful way of communicating today? Is it telephone? Is it television? Is it telegraph? Is tell a woman. <laughs> so we trained over 164 women, barefoot solar engineers all over the world, all over India first. And we demystified it by saying that every roof should have a panel rather than have power plants. And this is how we went all over India. We went to this village in Ladakh and we said, what benefit have you had from solar energy? And this woman from Ladakh turned and said, it's the first time I can see my husband's face in winter. <coughs> can you imagine? We're minus 40 and they still don't have any power. So we went to the cold deserts of Ladakh and the hot deserts of Rajasthan. And after doing this, all over India, we said we'd go to Africa. And in Africa, between 2004, 2014, we solar electrified the whole continent of Africa. What's the barefoot approach? The barefoot approach is to go to the whole community Sit down with them and see how much are you spending on, on lighting. They spend it on kerosene, candles, torch batteries, diesel. They say we spend about $10. If we bring solar light, are you prepared to give $10? Yes, we'll give $10. So the whole community says, we said we'll give $10. Have a committee which collects the $10 so that we can make that village self-sufficient if and when solar light comes in. Then the committee has to Agree in writing, and then each light, each house will have lights for the next seven years for four hours. They'll have clean light. They can use that power for charging a mobile, and they can then also have a solar lantern. Then they have to select an illiterate rural grandmother who has never left her village in her life, and we need the community to say, Yes, they will agree to send this woman to India to become a solar engineer. In six months, these women are, are dragged screaming onto the plane. They hate the idea. <laughs> they don't like it one bit. They don't want to be away from the family, from the children, from the animals. And they then land up here, 40 women from 10 countries land up, 
all chatting to each other and not understanding a word. <laughs> because they all come, they all speak French, Spanish, Jola. But the body language is great. And they all learn through sign language. Not the written or the spoken word. Only through sign language, these women become engineers. And we guarantee they know more about solar engineering than any graduate after five years of university. <laughs> now, film in Africa. Can you put it on, please? <laughs> This is about very simple rural women in Africa, from Ethiopia to Gambia, from Mauritania to Tanzania, from Sudan to South Africa. A quiet revolution is taking place. Illiterate and semi-literate rural women, most of them grandmothers, who have never left their villages in their lives are proving the impossible is possible. By their hands-on approach, they are baffling high-powered engineers, universities, donors, development planners, and paper-qualified experts by demonstrating incredible sophisticated technology skills and exposing the fundamental inadequacies of the rigid theoretical formal educational system. Without using the written or spoken word, they have come to India to be trained in six months to be solar engineers through the use of the sight and sound, unlike the universities and other urban-based training courses that are all theory and no practice. It is not surprising these women know more about practical installation, fabrication, repair and maintenance than any paper qualified certified solar engineer in any university or engineering college in Africa or India after five years. After six months in India, using only sign language while training, they know no theories of physics, electronics, mathematics. All the women sitting together on one table learn how to assemble charge controllers and inverters, how to establish a rural electronic workshop, in small rooms donated by the community. Install solar panels on the roofs, connect them to deep cycle batteries. In 2011, the president of Sierra Leone has constructed the first barefoot training center in Contaline in Africa, where now these 12 barefoot women solar engineers will train 150 grandmothers from all over the country. Poor communities in all these countries in Africa have agreed to pay what they now pay for kerosene, candles, wood, torch batteries and diesel. Depending on their economic status, they have agreed to pay between 5 to $10 a month per solar unit. This is a fundamental breakthrough because nothing should be free. 214 solar grandmothers has of today solar electrified 13,000 houses in 186 villages. The first technically and financially self-sufficient solar electrified villages in the whole continent of Africa, indeed the world. On a rare visit to the Barefoot College, when he also spent the night, His Holiness the Dalai Lama blessed the women solar engineers on the 13th of February 2011. That's secret, that's secret. So those illegitimate Illiterate villagers, even grandmother, uh, is it physically also a little bit old and illiteracy, illiterate. illiterate. Yet, see, through training, so 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 proud, self sort of confidence and dignity. Wonderful. By 2013, by including Liberia, South Africa, Southern Sudan, Zimbabwe, Burundi, Zanzibar. Almost all the countries in the continent of Africa will have been covered, saving 1.5 million liters of kerosene from polluting the environment and thousands of tons of wood from being cut, depleting the already fragile forest. The Indian government has approved the proposal to establish five barefoot training centers, solar electrify an additional 11,000 houses in 200 more villages spread over the whole continent of Africa. Sitting in Tinjamban. 
and there's a light of India. We're very happy tonight because it was very, very dark in Tinjamban before. There is no question. The barefoot approach is here to stay. What Mahatma Gandhi said comes to mind. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Gone to the Pacific, 20 hot shot grandmothers there. We have gone all over the world, 64 countries. And we can't do without partners. We can't do this alone. We have to have people who support us. The Indian government looks after the training and the uh, travel costs, and we look for partners who can look after the equipment. It costs about $64,000 to solar electrify 100 houses. And we have partners. And then when the, His Holiness came, he said something very profound. He said, now that you've shown the Barefoot College working in practice, we made a puppet of him too. <laughs> now that you've shown the Barefoot College working in practice, let's see if the professors and the experts can make it work in theory. <laughs> we, are, we are doing everything wrong. And yet it seems to be working. So I'll end with a very short film around the world, people are looking for solutions to poverty, pollution, access to clean water, and gender inequality. But one solution has been right there before our eyes. A woman. Her voice, silenced for generations, often by her own community, is now being used to inspire and transform. Her lack of formal education isn't her limitation. She has the gift of traditional knowledge and conventional wisdom and the courage to help us create a sustainable world from the ground up. Releasing her potential starts with a journey, one that begins in Rajasthan, India at Barefoot College, where she meets a world full of new challenges and possibilities. We see her and women like her learning new technology the practical way giving them the skills they need to become barefoot solar engineers, pioneering change. Upon returning home, she brings light that illuminates homes and powers night schools. She develops clean drinking water systems and teaches others to do the same. Paving the way for a better quality of life for all. The proof. Today, over 1,200 villages are solar electrified in 64 countries, bringing new life to over 500,000 people, one woman at a time, one village at a time, one country at a time. The search is over. She is the solution. She is a barefoot woman, and she is our future. Being the change we would like to see in the world starts by empowering her. Share her story. Share this video and join the movement. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing story. It's fantastic what you've heard.